Well, hi, and thanks for tuning back into the Stairs of Queen Anne project. And uh, we're going to be working on uh, this brick pillar and also the uh, wrought iron gate that spans these two pillars. And for this one, I've uh, masked the grout lines in the bricks. And I did that with um, the masking fluid. And I applied it with essentially what was like a uh, paper clip, just straightened out. And I kept putting, uh, I kept dipping it into the material and just dragging it and drawing with it. And you have to keep getting back into the bottle and refreshing almost every line, but it works pretty well. And anything that you put down you don't like is really easy to remove. So I have protected those areas because I don't want them to be uh, the color of brick. The grout is going to be a variety of colors also, but it's going to have a lot of light in it. And on the shaded side of the pillar, of course, it's going to be a lot darker. But in the brick, uh, I need to uh, put in a, a very light layer uh, using uh, some CAD red, some rose matter, some ochre. Uh, I've used a little, little bit of alizarin crimson and thinned it out uh, considerably because the, the light is striking on that one facing uh, to the left. So uh, behind the gate and on the the left side of this pillar or the side that's facing us uh, it's getting quite a bit of light there will be a shadow cast on that surface eventually but the light layer goes in first I mean you can always make things darker and uh, so you can't really go wrong if you just use quite a bit of water in your mix and dilute it and uh, put down a, a light layer uh, a base layer there's some raw sienna uh, in this also, but and some uh, burnt sienna. And I keep touching different uh, mixtures. And the bricks, are, of course, are not all one, uh, one value, one hue. Uh, so in, to these bricks, I'm adding uh, some browns in places and even a touch of blue and uh, some grays. Um, but the, uh, the first layer is very light, primarily uh, using raw sienna and created a pink using uh, rose matter and ochre and quite a bit of water. Keep it very faint. You don't want to overdo it on the areas that are in your light. Uh, light areas in your painting are kind of precious. You know, you can't really get them back, at least not completely. You can do a lift to take out some of the color, but you never get your white back, not totally. Uh, so go easy on that and apply your uh, colors brick by brick because they are all individuals. Um, there's places where the, the, the initial layer will be spread around, but uh, when I finish this, it's going to look as though each brick is its own unique, uh, has its own unique individual character. Um, the area behind the gate, I need to protect, and I don't want that to be pink or the, the brick color leaking back there. So I put down a paper to kind of do a little bit of a lifter and keep that from flowing into the uh, the background which is going to be greenery behind that wrought iron gate and that's coming up shortly I'm going to have to do a lot of masking on the uh, wrought iron just so I'll be able to see my drawing uh, if I do too much painting in the background it's just going to overwhelm it and then I won't be able to see what I've drawn and I don't want to have to do that again um, I could but it's harder to see the pencil uh, you know, if you've got a lot of paint underneath and I don't want the pencil influencing my painting too much. So that is also going to get protected with the uh, masking fluid. And it's just going to be an application, like I said, of 
You can use any kind of thin implement that comes to a point, but metal seems to work better than a brush. So if you've just got a straight pin of some sort, like a, a knitting needle type of thing would be great. Um, and experiment a little bit, but uh, I found like just a paper clip. Uh, you do have to clean it, you know, as the, the masking fluid you know, dries on the metal surface, you can clean it off and it'll flow off the tip better. If you allow it to dry, it kind of builds up and then you get a big wide line. So these lines are are, are narrow, slender, and uh, when they come off, it'll reveal that white paper and that'll be great because then I can do my grout lines and I'll do that with a liner brush, very thin, very small brush, and I can put color into the grout lines between the bricks. Now these bricks have so much color uh, and each one uh, seems to have had its own life uh, because they don't all have the um, you know the same kind of uh, weathering but uh, there is kind of one thing that's predominant and that is this sort of pink with uh, raw sienna uh, as a base and then over the top of that you can you can build up a layer to make any of them darker and um, you want to kind of you don't want to create a pattern with that you want to make sure that it makes sense visually so it should be totally random and there's some yellow ochre being applied in areas and some bricks are redder than others and a little bit of dry brush is nice also uh, because there's definite texture to the surface of this brick. Now this part of the painting is, um, is tedious in that you, you can't work quickly on this. However, it's kind of fun and it's kind of rewarding because you can see these bricks take shape as you work. And that's exciting. Uh, and you can visualize what's going to come from your efforts. Uh, it's also setting up for uh, creating that gate, which is really neat. I was very impressed uh, with that wrought iron work. I mean, it was just like from the arts and crafts movement in, in England. I mean, it was just gorgeous. And... Uh, I'm not sure who did it, but I'm certainly impressed with it. And I'm pretty sure it was, you know, turn of the century stuff. At least the design was. Uh, maybe it was done later, but I think this area, uh, some of these homes were, you know, built early 1900s. You know, maybe 1920s, but I'm not a historian for this architecture, but it, it's it's been there a while now i think probably some of this brickwork could have been redone but i think they kept the original design and that's really great that it was preserved because this is just a classic bit of architecture so back to the painting uh want to be patient with it and when you're putting down a layer a light layer like this the tendency is to Maybe get ahead of yourself, get a little too dark, start applying with a big brush. Well, you need to fight that because, <clears throat> as I mentioned, I mean, you can do a lift, but you can't get your lights, your lights back. And so just uh, take a breath, let them dry, see what's developing, and work them as, they, uh, as the paper dries out. Uh, work the areas, and you'll you'll get what uh it, you'll see the development uh if you're patient um everything it, you when you put color a lot of color down uh you typically think oh no i mean that's way too much but as it dries a lot of times it'll flatten out and the intensity will uh diminish and you'll you'll see that oh it was okay after all but you do have to kind of be vigilant and uh you know keep keep a good eye on it. You can't walk away from it, come back and then let something settle in that's way dark. 
because um, it can give you a problem. So quite a bit of water and keep working these areas uh, one at a time. Try not to do anything that's sweeping across the board. Um, if you touch in a little bit of color in one area, you probably want to move it around. It's sort of like if this pillar was its own composition, you want that color balance to, to move around and you want the eye to travel around. So you don't want to use like, for example, one glob of orange just in one little spot. You want to probably touch it in three or four areas to keep your eye moving. And that's true of any of the mixes that you put down. You want them to uh, occur in more than one, in more than just one spot. Move them around. Uh, this needs to have some continuity to it, um, so it ties into the bricks that are already done and the wall behind. So uh, that's a continuation um, in it, of the mixture that was used back there for the dark side of this pillar but it'll have darker values of the same tones. Uh, this side though is, as I mentioned, it's going to be exposed to the sun more, even though there'll be a dark shadow cast on this, on this wall. Uh, the, predominantly it's going to be uh, fairly light. So I'm going to step back, play a little bit of music and you can watch this technique um, and it's, it's slow developing, but uh, the results are, I think, uh, pretty satisfactory. I was pretty happy with it.
All right, I've uh, gone over my drawing with the resist material and I was using, uh, as I mentioned, a paper clip. And I drew all of my lines, I've protected them, and now I'm putting some uh, water on the paper so that I can paint the area behind this gate and behind the pillar that is, uh, it's all landscaped and uh, there's a lot of shrubbery, a lot of greenery back there, and there's a little bit of uh, brickwork uh, by the entrance to this um, palatial estate, and it's just gorgeous. But there's a lot of uh, greenery, and I want to uh, push that back a little bit. So this area is, will not be super distinct uh, and specific. It's going to uh, have a little more of a, an effect or the, uh, the leaves and so forth are, are blending together to the eye because the focal point in this will be this gate. And um, behind it, I don't want anything that's too distracting. Uh, if it's if it's super strong and with a lot of uh, strong colors or distinct edges and lines and so forth, it'll be visually confusing. So, uh, unlike uh, our eye, unlike a camera, uh, probably has more depth of field but we tend to focus on uh, on things that are of interest and in this case I want to be focusing more on the 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 gate rather than what's behind it uh, although I'm going to have to make it all look like plants of course uh, and using the colors that I've carried through from you know other parts of the painting um, I don't want them to be you know just completely outlined and sharp and in focus because the gate will will take precedent over that. Um, there's some concrete uh, on the uh, bottom of this pillar and um, I put in some light tones for um, the uh, base layer on the concrete and there's a little bit of um, the pinkish brick tone, but primarily it's it's a a, a raw sienna uh, that's been grayed. There's a little bit of uh, crimson in it and some ochre in it, and on the uh, the side that's uh, away from the light, there it's going to be quite a bit darker. And I want to also include a little bit of textures in so that the concrete doesn't look completely smooth. Maybe a little bit of blue added uh, to the shadow shadow side, and variations of brown. I've got um, some sepia and Van Dyke, raw sienna, as I mentioned. Put in a little touch of crimson right there, and I get my palette oriented the way I'm used to it. I've got my palette sitting on some foam core board so I don't make the mistake of dragging some color patch through areas I've already worked on. So I'm just putting in little hints of color here and there and the paper is pretty wet so it'll bleed out and diffuse. Um, and again, working from light to dark is very important. I don't want to get a bunch of dark tones that um, I have to try and lighten up after I've applied the paint. So keeping it light, the shadow, shadow side, it's going to be up against a, uh, down low here, uh, it's going to be up against a hedge and there'll be a bit of a shadow cast on the wall from the hedge. The hedge is another video actually, and it was fun. Um, so I hope you tune in for that one, which is coming up next, I believe, after the completion of this pillar and gate. So you can kind of tell how I'm working. I'm working from the top down in this painting, 
and background to foreground. Now, this is in more, more of a foreground than the, the area behind the gate, but I'll, I'm getting over there right away because it's, uh, it's needed. Before I can do any work on that gate, I have to complete that. So that's part of this also. And you can see where I've removed the masking uh, from the, the pillar. So the grout lines are all very light and it's the white of the paper because it was protected by the masking masking fluid. Well, they won't be light forever uh, because these grout lines have got a lot of um, moss growing in them and they're just, you know, dirty and old and uh, have accumulated a lot of dark. So uh, those are going to be darkened and uh, some are going to be remain light in the sun, but on the dark side, it'll be quite a bit darker than what you see here. I'm still touching in some color here around the base. As it works, as these big, large brick uh, work their way into the concrete foundation. And this also, this side has a big uh, shadow cast on it from the gate and when the papers dry I can begin working on it because I can't have that bleeding all over it's got to be controlled so I'm just touching in some color and darkening up the values particularly on the shadow side here Well, now I'm working behind the gate and I'm using colors that I've already used for leaves and other areas. Uh, I've wet the paper and the gate itself is protected by the masking film, but I have to stay off of the brick. So I'm just touching it, uh, the paper and letting the color move around using the water on the paper. And as I mentioned, I don't want this to be real distinct back here is kind of light tones and I'm letting a letting it bleed together it pushes it to the background uh, if we put in anything very distinct it'll become sharper focus and that's not what we're looking for it's going to be uh, an overall pretty light in value uh, behind this gate because for one there's quite a bit of sunshine uh, on these plants that are in the background here. So very, very dark values wouldn't make a lot of sense. There are, of course, places where um, there are shadows being cast within the foliage and those will get some touches of dark, but uh, not to the degree of the trees that I've already done. You have to decide what you want to uh, draw the eye in your painting. You know, if you really want to bring attention to something, you use a lot of light against dark and uh, I'm probably not wanting to do that in this portion of the painting. The focus in this painting really, I mean, the, what creates a lot of depth is to have the bricks and uh, the details of that gate very sharp in focus in the foreground and then your eye will travel back up this walkway uh, to the distance to the street up above and the trees on the right um, and then you can explore after you get the general sense of it you're you're going to keep looking around at what's behind so it makes it kind of fun
so I've pretty much finished the area behind the gate and now uh, I'm going to make sure my paper's real good and dry so I'm using a, a hair dryer and I've only got it on uh, warm I don't have it on hot because I don't want to bake anything and that resist material could get ornery if I get it too hot it can become gooey and can mess with your paper so just a warm air on here and drying the paper and once the paper's good and dry then I can remove that masking material that I used over the gate itself and uh, it was the same thing that was done on the uh, grout lines so working that around when I'm satisfied that the paper's dry enough uh, I'll rub everything off and then I can start working on the gate because the paper will be exposed. So I've got the resist material off and I've cleaned up my paper and I'm about ready to start working on the, uh, the gate itself, the wrought iron. And that's uh, a mixture that's uh, got some blue and green in it. It's got a little bit of cobalt uh, green. Uh, I'm using a little bit of Payne's gray, a little bit of Chinese white, uh, some black in places, and when I'm painting that gate, uh, essentially it's almost like drawing with a fine brush. And I'm kind of careful that I don't overdo it here again. You want to start with lighter values. And the gate's uh, got a three-dimensional character because it's faceted. It's, you know, it's the, uh, the iron itself some places is twisted and curled and it's going to catch light and you have to be thinking about where the light strikes um, so the light coming from the far side uh, the side of the gate that exposed to the viewer here is fairly dark it's mostly silhouetted however it does have highlights uh, because of the angle of the uh, of the sun so keeping all that in mind the first step is just to put down uh, kind of a light uh, blue-green tone. Uh, it's kind of a gray-green with a little blue in it. And that'll be refined as I work my way down. Uh, the closer we get to uh, the foreground or, or the, the viewer, which is a little bit lower in the picture plane, it's probably going to get a little darker and a little bit sharper. Uh, everything's gradually coming forward so this portion uh, of the painting is slow <laughs> but fun uh, because I love seeing this gate develop and uh, I've saved my my paper so I have the luxury of having some light built in already and uh, I put a tone down and I can easily add dark accents or if need be uh, leave the paper uh, alone to create my highlights so I'm drawing with a fine brush here it's a liner brush and you can see that I'm even steadying my my hand and my arm as I'm as I'm drawing so this one takes some time and I'll, I'll speed it up here a bit uh, 
and hopefully uh, not too fast so that you can see how this is done.
So the next step is to put this cast shadow on this, the face of this brick pillar. And one thing about shadows, um, they should not be delineated uh, in such that they have outlines. Uh, shadows um, are not defined by edges, they're defined just by shapes of uh, tones of color that may contain many variations of color, but they generally, uh, you're not going to see any kind of outlining. So that's one thing to be aware of. Uh, one thing that makes the shadow look uh, false is to put any kind of an outline around it that's darker than the body of the outline itself. And so, uh, water is essential, but the dry paper is necessary so that it doesn't get away from you. You want to have a little bit of bleed going on within the shadow itself, but you don't want to have so much water that it gets away from you and trails in areas that you didn't expect. Um, because this would be hard to lift uh, against a light background. So you need to protect that light background. So I'm just really drawing uh, this shadow with a very fine liner brush and I want to keep the color uh, within the shape of the shadow. I want to keep that bleeding and, and kind of uh, spreading within the wa you know the water on the paper so that um, I don't get edges or tide pools or anything that's going to create an outline. This shadow turned out to be quite a challenge and I spent a lot of time on it. I was very happy with the result, but I could have done a little bit more planning uh, because I got lost a little bit. I couldn't see my drawing very well and um, it got confusing um, and I wanted to make sure that I didn't make it too strong because the gate has to be uh, darker in value than the shadow that it's casting. Although there is quite a bit of contrast uh, created because you've got a light background you're working against. There are some little uh, areas of light that are coming through in places and the mixture for this was a lot of alizarin crimson and black and also uh, some burnt sienna and a little bit of uh, some browns mixed in. So there's a number of things at work here and just letting the water be the vehicle to move that that paint around. Um, very, very little paint on the brush as I was you know, essentially sketching it out. And I did have to do a few lifts uh, along the way where I felt like it was getting a little too dark. And a little bit of blue, uh, like a cerulean, inside this shadow um, can can really help the effect. Now you can see that I've got a bit of an outline started, so you have to take uh, just plain water and work your brush in those areas to soften it. Otherwise you create an edge, and once you get an edge, they're, they're very difficult to lift. So you need to be aware of that.
Okay, so at this point I've got quite a bit of the uh, gate completed and the shadow that's cast by the gate and I've softened it up uh, so that I don't have any edges uh, that are standing out and drawing too much attention and a lot of the work now involves um, just putting little dark accents on the metal or highlights and I still need needing to do the concrete uh, that supports this brick and that's going to be coming and also the uh, hedge that runs up the sidewalk next to this brick wall so that's another another video in the series and uh, I enjoyed that uh, very much and I if you've stuck with this video to, to the bitter end, uh, you should get some sort of merit badge. Uh, it's been a long ordeal. <laughs> uh, it was fun for me, and I'm hoping that uh, you will try a project similar to this and, and uh, try all these various techniques so um, you can see what the rewards will be. And thanks so much for watching, and let's uh, move on to this hedge. Thank you.